Unity recently made a massive mistake. Starting January 1st, Unity developers, once past a certain threshold, will be charged a fee per install of their game. So, some Unity developers are trying to find a new game engine that they can call home. Unreal Engine, Game Maker, and Godot are all known to be great choices. Today we'll be focusing on Godot. Godot is a free open source engine that has both 2D and 3D capabilities. It's not new either, it's been used to make a good amount of games. Cruelty Squad, Endoparasitic, and our game Death's Toll, you can go wishes on Steam, were all made using Godot. As someone who has used Godot for almost a year, I want to give the newcomers a few tips about the engine. In case you don't know for reference, I'll be using the terms scene and node throughout the video. These are what nodes are, and these are what scenes are. Number one, use the Godot documentation. Godot has documentation about everything that you can look up on Google, but you can also find this documentation inside the engine itself. If you control click a built-in function or type, it'll open up a tab of documentation for it. In the top right, there's also a help button that will take you to the documentation as well. Number two, use inherited scenes. It's a good rule of thumb to make something its own scene, especially if you plan on using it more than once. This is a good tip that you'll see in most videos giving Godot tips. What I don't hear as often, however, is to use more inherited scenes. In case you're wondering, an inherited scene is just a scene that uses the attributes of another scene. For example, let's say you want to make multiple enemy types. You could just duplicate an already existing enemy to use as a template to make the new one. The problem with that is let's say you want to change something that affects all enemies, like adding a new node. You would have to add the new node to each individual enemy. Instead, what you can do is make a scene called enemy base and have all the enemies inherit that scene. So when I throw in a new node to the enemy base scene, all of the enemies will now have it because they inherit it from enemy base. As you can see, enemy base has a sprite 2D, but each enemy can edit their node of sprite 2D to suit their needs. Number three. Use groups. Each node in Godot can be assigned to a group, even multiple groups if you want. Groups are Godot's versions of tags that other softwares have. These can help reference a node and categorize the node. Let's say this enemy needs to know where the player is. How would the enemy reference the player? If it's in a simple scene like this, a sloppy way would be to get the parents and then get the player by its name. But what if the player moves in the tree or changes name? If we added a group to the player called the player, we can then go into the enemy script and type get tree dot get first node in group player. That way, even if the player's position on the tree changes or its name changes, the enemy will still have reference to it. Another example would be collision detection. This enemy here detects an object on layer one. How would it differentiate between a player and an object? You could move the player to a different layer and have the enemy detect that layer alone, or you can make the enemy check if the object it's colliding with is in group player. If body dot is in group player, execute code. Number four, GD shader is powerful. Godot has a powerful tool called the GD shader, which is Godot's own shading language. At first, it may seem confusing or not useful to your needs, but I assure you it's useful. For example, let's say I want to make this button have a white outline when hovered over. What I did at first while working on Death's Toll was just to make another PNG of the same image but with an outline and then switch the texture when needed. However, while searching the web, I came across multiple outline shaders that do the exact same thing without needing another texture. I will say, GD Shader has its own language different from the normal scripting language in Godot. It has many similarities, but it is different and you will have to learn. Number five, keep learning about the engine. This one seems obvious, but you should take time to learn more about a feature or just the engine itself. There's so many ways to implement the same thing, so be sure to see how others do it. I recently watched a platformer tutorial, and although I knew most of what he taught, there were a few tricks he did that I did not know of. The Godot documentation also has some basic tutorials, so be sure to check them out if you need to. Chances are, even if you think you know it all, you still have room to learn more about Godot. These are my five tips for people who start using Godot. If you need more help, there are plenty of tutorials and videos on Godot that can help. I recommend watching Heartbeast and his Godot tutorials. We are currently working on a game called Death's Toll, and it's about a road trip where a mythical beast is always chasing behind. You can wish to sit on Steam now, and you can follow our socials to stay updated. Thank you for watching.